Okay, we are recording, so when you're ready, Ruthann. Very good, thank you, Chapin. Mm -hmm. This is a public meeting of the Indiana Art Commission Individual Advancement Program Fiscal Year 2021 Grant Review Panel. I am Ruthann Calling, a commissioner from Jeffersonville, Indiana. Today is April 15th, and we are meeting by conference call and streaming live from a webinar. We welcome applicants and other guests who may be listening in today, and would like to remind you that you are muted for this interview and review. This is no direct, in other words, there's no direct contact or conversation about the evaluation and disposition of applications during or after the meeting. At this time, we would like the panelists and staff to introduce themselves. Please state your name, your occupation, and where you are from in the state. I will call out your name. Gary, please go first. Hey, everybody. I'm Gary G., visual artist based in Indianapolis, Indiana. Thank you, Gary. Pam? Hi, everyone. My name is Pam Hurst. I'm a jewelry artist based in Martinsville, Indiana. Thank you, Pam. Jill? Hi, this is Jill Lehman. I'm an art consultant and founder of High Frequency Arts, and I'm based in Fishers, Indiana. Thank you, Jill. Deb? I'm Deb Stapleton. I'm a museum director, recently retired in the last two months uh, from Anderson, Indiana. Thank you. Zingrid? Zingrid, unmute yourself. I'll mute you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sigrid Zahner. I am um, the head of ceramics at Purdue and uh, head of sculpture. Um, their coordinator of the Craft and Material Studies program. Thank you. Anna? Excuse me. Anna Tragaster, IAC staff. Chapin? Chapin Schnick, IAC staff. Thank you, all of you. Now we'll begin the panel review. This is how the process will work. I will announce the application and ask the first reader to begin the discussion. The first reader will provide their assessment of the application based upon the evaluation criteria and their perspective. Panelists, please note that the applications do not need to be recapped since everyone has read it. Just provide your comments. After the first reader is finished, I will ask the second reader to present any new additional or opposing comments. We are not looking for consensus, just a full evaluation from the different perspectives panelists bring to the table. After the second reader has finished, I will open the discussion for final comments. Remember, in the interest of time, we are only looking for new additional or opposing viewpoints. If a panelist has a conflict of interest, that panelist will be placed on hold while the application is reviewed. Finally, once the application has been reviewed by the full panel, we ask the panel to update their scores in the online system. It is common for scores to change as a result of this broader discussion. These scores save automatically. Panelists, are there any questions? No. None being noted, let's begin. We are going to start with the application FY21 IAP Austin. Since Gary has declared a conflict of interest, he's being placed in a waiting room. The first reader is Jill. Jill, will you start us off, please? Sure. Um, this applicant is focused on her paper and printmaking skills, and the application indicates for
I've lost connection with Jill. Yep, seems like she's gone dark. So um, I think the best thing to do is just move uh, on to the second. Jill, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, can oh, you hear me okay? Yeah, could you start yeah, over actually? Yeah, we lost you there. Oh, sorry, I did, did get a message that said for some reason I was unstable in communication. So let me get closer here again. Um, so with this, uh, my scores accordingly with this application, the notes that I made indicated there is a good outline supporting their interest in continuing education and how they are taking this as not only to advance their education, but to help them with a problem they have identified with their production and um, logistics and distribution of their materials based on the mediums that they use. The resume and experience for this applicant was well outlined and described and um, identified as an early career artist. They were able to identify for us in the application their interest in public exhibition of their works, as well as being able to share in different forums and events with um, students and others from a teaching and education standpoint. I indicated overall the timeline associated with the project was well outlined and feasible, and it had identified um, specific goals associated with um, participation in these events. I'll open it up to the second reader. All right, thank you very much, Jill. Pam is our second reader. I agree with everything Jill said. I feel it's a very strong application, very well done, very um, thorough, even with options if some things didn't work, she had backup plans. So um, looks as to be a need for paperwork in Indiana. So that also fills a, um, function for the state artistic community also. And that's all I have to add. Are there any new or opposing comments from other panelists? I don't, I don't have an opposing comment. I do have a comment or a couple of comments. Um, and Go ahead. That um, one of the things uh, this artist said was, uh, she talked about the hierarchy of the material and it's not available to people of lower classes and she wants to introduce that. And this is not a criticism either, but I'm wondering why she doesn't also paint on wood paneling or found paneling, um, especially if she goes to uh, sites that are, um, you know, uh, deserted places that where there's you know, been destruction of property and stuff like that, to pick up uh, things and paint on those, which is a slightly different way of working. And then the other thing is, um, so, I mean, I'm just suggesting she finds, she can also find different ways of painting, which I think would really lend itself to her style of painting. And the other thing she talked about was that um, there's no um, paper making places and she needs to know about Twin Rocker at Brookston, Indiana. Um, she can actually go there and buy that paper, but also see if they will allow her to, they have tours of the, of the thing and they could talk to her about um, how they make it. I just think it'd be a useful place to her, for her to visit. Twin Rockers at Brookston, they're open for tours. They, they love to have artists come in. They make paper out of denim. It's just something for her to think about. But I had a very strong reaction to her work, I must say. Um, so uh, this is not a negative thing. It's just in addition to. Thank you, Zingrid. Are there any other new or opposing comments? Uh, this is Deb Stapleton. I wanted to say that I appreciated in her budget that she included things beyond just what she was asking for in the grant. That obviously with so many of the projects, there are other expenses 
beyond the grant things. And she's one of the few artists who actually put these other things in. And I just wanted to reiterate again how important I think it was that the, the second reader had mentioned that she listed alternatives should first or second options uh, not all come through. Thanks. Thank you for those comments. Additional comments. I actually have a question for Deb. Sure. Um, Go ahead. Yes. All right. So this is Anna. I just wanted to clarify. I know that um, this applicant's given you a few different options for for plans in the budget, but when you say that um, there are things that are beyond a project listed in the in the expenses, could you give me an example? I just want to make sure that that's eligible. Okay. Um, she talked about things like the cost of, uh, I'm trying to look that up again now, um, the ideas of the things in terms of travel, some of the travel to the places that she would cover herself or public transportation in certain cases, that sort of thing. Oh, I so see. They are, see that, so it is a Part of the project would be eligible for project, but um, goes beyond just the two thousand dollar maximum. Okay, got it. That that is okay. how I understand. Thank you. Uh huh. Additional comments, anyone? None being noted. I'm going to ask you now to finalize your scores and update your online comments. If you need more time, please let me know. Great job, everyone. You're doing great. Please interrupt us if we're going too fast. I'm moving ahead to our next applicant, who is Bay. And um, Chapin, you want to let Gary back in? You Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Gary, um, we'd like for you to, as our first reader, to start us off with applicant day, please. Okay. Hi, everybody. The um, impact on artist career development. The artist has provided, provided an artistic narrative that supports consistency and growth. She has had jewelry inside high-end retail spaces, as well as gallery settings with unlimited potential and wearable jewelry market. Just an ideal, Kay should think outside the box and utilize an untapped potential resource in the future. She could actually recruit an apprentice. The quality of the artist's work, yes. She had work, her work laid out in a manner that was easy to view and is consistent with her art artistic career objectives. Although her photo photos were easy to view, I believe that Kay should look at some high-end jewelry photos, like ads for reference. Look at lighting and display angles, as well as the layouts, should help to make her portfolio and give her high-end photos to match her wearable artwork. The public benefit and community engagement, I believe the K has a great narrative regarding public participation and community engagement, working with Ignite Studios as well as engaging in inclusive audiences, implications of, of unlimited growth potential. This is a highly feasible project proposal that can be completed within the timeline. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Appreciate your comments. Our second reader is Zingrid. Unmute yourself, Zingrid. Yeah, I'm just looking to see if I had anything um, different to this, but I don't really have anything to add. So is that is that cool? That's that's fine. I'll okay. ask the other panelists for new or opposing comments. 
None being noted, I'll ask you to finalize your scores and update your online comments, please. Let me know if you need more time. Our next applicant is Baxter, and Deb, I'd like for you as the first reader to start. As, um, in terms of the, art, the artist's career and development, I thought it was very clear in what the artist wanted to do to help people provide uh, regionally sourced yarns for weavers and a need for space, workshops, teaching, and sharing knowledge. Uh, beyond stating the amount of yarn to be completed, I thought the application could have been stronger if there were some additional measurable goals. For instance, an estimate of how many fiber artists could benefit from the project. Uh, the documentation showed the uh, commitment the artist has to fiber and the quality of her accomplishments. In the quality of the artist's work, um, obviously through her resume and her visual materials, it's very clear uh, the educational and career paths that the artist has pursued and achieved. She has a very strong educational and experiential background in fibers and the fiber art. And it seems she it appears she has a deep passion for fibers, and it's apparent she wishes to share this passion and knowledge with others interested uh, in this art form. From the community engagement portion of this, I thought the project was definitely geared to a specific target audience. Um, and one of the strengths of the project is that it'll not only support Indiana artisans but also the use of local and regional resources. I thought the application could be stronger if one knew how many presentations would be given in the futures and the numbers of people who may be impacted by the results of the research and efforts done by the applying artist. I think sharing knowledge and materials with others to benefit a region of Indiana is a strong component of the project. And I think not only that the artist is interested in working regionally with the fiber system network, but also wanting to have Indiana fiber artisans link up with a nationally recognized organization is a plus. Also her willingness to share uh, knowledge with IU Fiber Department in Bloomington uh, is a strength. Feasibility, I think the expenses were clearly outlined and appear reasonable. I think it's noted that the artist is willing to put up her own resources in addition to the grant money to see the project as successful. Uh, I thought I appreciated the fact that the artist was transparent in mentioning, mentioning the purchasing of the wool needing to be done prior to the start of the project. However, those that grant funds were asked for and the intended outcomes takes place within the project time frame and those costs come under the grant. I think the, one of the strongest parts of the feasibility is sharing the information and resources with others. Thank you, Deb. Appreciate your comments. Our second reader is Jill, please. Yeah, I think Deb did a very nice job outlining a lot of the comments I had. The only other thing that I would add with this is I really appreciated in this how she had outlined such a collaboration with between the producers, the millers, the weavers, and herself. So I, I think it is um, benefits our community when we are looking to collaborate as broadly as we can. Um, and how she is outlining that in this um, grant application, I thought was very well done. I also like that it's a unique um, and very interesting um, area from a fiber artist standpoint and ties back into our Indiana community and our agricultural community base that we have here. So uh, I just thought that was an added interesting um, 
and uniqueness to this application. Thank you, Jill. Are there any new or opposing comments? Um, I have a. I just have a comment about this applicant. Um, I looked through this application and I was thrilled by her extensive experience uh, with the material. I was particularly struck by the uh, spin cycle uh, sculpture that she made, which was spinning wool. I thought it was very clever and actually something she could, um, you know, she could actually uh, help people make those. And I'm speaking really as an educator. Uh, the fact that she is working so hard to um, bring this skill set to the community, we, we keep losing our textiles um, uh, areas, believe it or not. And I, I know we, we've lost our, we, we still have a small textile program at Purdue, but we, we keep losing it. So I feel like her energy in keeping this alive is very, very important to Indiana, which has an incredible textiles community, especially at IU Bloomington, they still have a very strong one. The fact that she's there reaching out and she talked about the, the, um, the shop that used to sell uh, textiles um, or, or um, materials for textiles uh, closed down, I think it's significant. So I was very encouraged that there is someone who is so um, involved in keeping this craft alive as an artist as well. She's an, obviously an artist, not just a craftsperson. So I just wanted to make that comment. I think the importance of what she's doing is significant. Thank you, Zingbrid. Are there additional comments? <coughs> None being noted. I'm going to ask you to finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. Moving ahead to our next applicant, who is Benson, and our first reader will be Pam, please. Um, yes, this uh, application was to create a very large loom to do large-scale tapestries and weaving. Um, I felt that the um, overall it was a very good application. Um, working large is hard for most artistic endeavors and to take that on is huge. Um, she works out of the library and um, the community engagement and having workshops in a community weaving I thought was a really great option to engage the community. Um, sometimes though, I think community people um, are hesitant to go do stuff if, they're, if it's unknown. So I guess just a suggestion would be maybe she could have a demo or an exhibit first so that people were kind of exposed to this before um, offering up the community workshop. But overall, I thought everything was good. I think it can be done in the time. Um, and that was indicated and well thought out plan and timing and costing. So, um, and appreciated that, you know, she was very creative in the building materials and putting it together herself as opposed to just finding a pre made purchase. So, those are my comments. Thank you, Pam. Our second reader will be Gary, please. Thank you. Um, the application was pretty straightforward and clearly defined. Um, the quality of her work was exceptionally well, and she expressed the interest for a new loan. Um, what appears to be strong to me in the application is that she plans to coordinate with Ignite Studio and the free community workshops. Um, I personally haven't been to Ignite Studios yet, however, I've heard a lot about the artistic programs and the impact on the artistic community uh, and it's becoming a hot maker space. 
I'm not 100% sure about the overall needs of a weaver or weaving loom. However, the explanation uh, sounds highly feasible to me as well. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Are there any new or opposing comments? Sorry, which uh, artist are we looking at right now? I seem to, I didn't hear the beginning. Benson. Okay. Um, I, I, I do have comments. I think um, to disagree with Gary, I think there's, it's essential to have looms in the community. I'm not sure if that's what Gary meant. And I think her intention is, is um, I mean, applaudable to start showing these skill sets to the community. So I, um, I think what she's asking for and her willingness to make a loom, which is no easy task, but is very doable, um, is, um, you know, laudable. Now, of course, remember, I am the head of craft and material studies, so maybe I have a, maybe I have a, you know, prejudice towards that. But I, I really um, think it's a, a very strong uh, application. To, to clarify with Zingrid, no, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in agreement. Oh, okay. That she, that she needs the loom. Yeah, I'm in, a, I'm in agreement. I'm okay. In agreement. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, I just realized I'm not allowed to say a very strong application either, so ignore that. I'm not allowed to say that really, am I? So sorry. <laughs> You're taking that back. Huh? Real, real <laughs> yes, I have no opinion about that, but. Uh, <laughs> I was very right. their application. Let contact. me ask the other panelists then if there are any other new or opposing comments, please. None being noted, I'd like for you to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. I was trying to I come in. Me. I had a comment. Oh, Can you hear go me? Go ahead, please. Okay. Sure. Sorry. Sorry. One of the things I, I, I agree with what's been said and her moving forward with things. One of the things I wonder, she talks about doing research and trying experimentally on her own with various materials. If there has been any thought from the artist that having interaction with someone who's already working on a large scale loom, uh, perhaps through a studio visit or taking a workshop or a class, just that that might strengthen her project. Thank you for those comments, additional comments before we vote. Thank you. So go ahead and finalize your scores and update your online comments, please. Let me know if you need more time. Our next applicant is Gully, and our first reader will be Zingrid, please. Unmute, Zingrid. <laughs> please. I will. I haven't said anything yet. Um, okay. <laughs> let me see what I had to say about this person. You know what? I did not have a lot of comments. I had actually no comments at all. Um, the only thing my concern about this is uh, she wants to um, she wants to do glass blowing or or, or help her. Um, classes, high school students do glass blowing, and my concern is about the cost of a, a glass blowing furnace, which is incredibly costly to keep. So I'm not quite sure if she's familiar with that cost and how much it would be to um, do that unless she's gonna go to someone else's uh, facility. Like I know Lisa Pillow has a facility that she allows people to come to and take classes. And I noticed that Lisa Pillow is one of the artists that she's going to work with. My, that's my only concern. That, um, and, uh, 
uh, an artistic career to to achieve a su sustainable income from making glass art uh, is tricky uh, 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 financially because I know that uh, just a small uh, furnace costs about fifteen hundred a month just to keep it going. So I, I don't know if she's looked into uh, the the uh, feasibility of um, making a living as a glass artist if you haven't gone on to take an MFA in glass blowing. Just, it's just something that concerns me. But that's it really. Thank you, Zingrid, for your comments. Our second reader is Deb, please. Are you there, Deb? Yes, I'm here. I think one of the things that I thought was one of the strongest parts of the narrative was her talking about focusing on three types of glass pieces. And I thought it was interesting that even in her grant application, she truly has a love of sharing knowledge and wanting people to learn about the glass making process. Um, so that we as a reader of the grant could learn something along the way. So I think if that is in your grant application, how well you would do in trying to depart, uh, impart that kind of information with people as she goes to some of these art fairs she talks about and some of uh, working with other people trying to help them understand about glass blowing and get a love for that as well. And I also think her plan seems very reasonable and very feasible. Um, the strength, that's one of the strengths that she had was having private lessons with more than one artist so that she learns the different techniques and methods. Uh, and then also so that they can help her in the areas that she needs the most. That's all I had to add. Thank you for your comments, Deb. Are there any new or opposing comments? panelists. I have, I have one. Um, I, know, I know that she also mentioned in her plan that she would be working with three expert artists on some of the lessons. So I think um, beyond just community engagement, she's engaging with some other artists that can possibly help her with her vision. So that's all I had to add. Thank you, Gary. Other comments? Pam, unmute. Are you talking to us, Pam? Can you hear me? Now I can. Thank you. You can? Let's start over okay. with your comment. Okay. Um, so community engagement, she just did a lot of um, art shows, craft shows that could be exposed to, which is great. Um, and I would like to see her even expand that um, to a little bit more just community engagement if she could. And I know you mentioned Lisa. I do know Lisa has a portable um, studio oven that she travels with. So maybe she could coordinate with her to do an exhibit at the school or other places that would even get more information out there. That's just a suggestion, not a anything to do with scoring. Thank you, Pam. Any new or opposing comments? None being noted. I'll ask you to finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. A reminder if you could keep your line on mute when you're not speaking. Ruth Ann, we always get feedback from your line. Um, and Deb, it is really helpful if you take yourself off speakerphone. We can hear you a lot better. Let's move ahead to our next applicant. Not sure how to pronounce their name. Jander Noah, perhaps. Um, Gary, will you start us off as our first reader, please? Yeah, thank you. Um, the artist career development, what makes this application strong for me is that the artist is introducing me to a new medium by the way of the sugar sculptures. 
and is an interesting concept in itself. Uh, the quality of her work directly connects with the body of the conceptual work. Uh, public benefit and community engagement. One of the strongest points of her application is the narrative about the way people interact with her sugar sculptures. Uh, that it has a location to show her work. She has a location to show her new body of work. Um, I admire the fact that she's working on a proje project that correlates with chronic illness and that she wants to include conversations that would help with health awareness and collaborations with and connections with the health advocacy, 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 service. Her plan of action is excellently detailed and the point to the point. Give her two thumbs up. That's all I have on that one. Thank you, Gary. Our next reader will be Jill, please. Uh, just a couple other comments. This is a new medium for me as well, so it was a very interesting application to read and, and try to follow along with what she was trying to create. I would imagine that it's very delicate uh, and very challenging to come up with a complete um, exhibit. I questioned the delicacy of it and how long an exhibit can actually be on display, but don't know enough about the end product to understand the feasibility associated with that. I do like that she is working to present aspects, again, of the diabetic community and the partnership she is looking to create with has. I don't know how this um, type of work is, has ability to have financial stability. It, seems to be something that you would create and, and tear, tear down from an exhibit. So I'm assuming for her to be able to participate in these exhibits, um, each sculpture is assembled and then disassembled and then she is looking for more grants and Jill? funding for oh, additional I'm producing. Gonna, I'm going to interrupt you, Jill. We are having a pretty uh, hard time. Your audio oh, going going in and out. Is that better? It is much better now. Yeah. You okay. Could start where you left off. It started to get really bad. Sure. So I was just saying the connections with the diabetic community. It sounds like for me that each um, exhibit is kind of a a build the exhibit and then um, tear down the exhibit. So I'm assuming based on the type of medium that she's using, there's not a lot of financial stability associated with this. So to be able to continue to produce an exhibit requires funding. Um, so that was the interesting piece, very interesting um, body of work. That's something that it looks like for her to be able to continue to um, it does require a lot of long-term funding for each project. Thank you, Jill. Um, are there any new or opposing comments? Can I interject here? Sure. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I yes. understand that concern about the um, the temporary, the temporary uh, nature of what she's doing. However, her work is a little bit more towards the performance art um, spectrum, end of the spectrum. And um, she does have an MFA in public art. I think she's very aware of the funding because she talks about uh, getting a job as a high school teacher to fund her work. So um, this is a kind of, you know, art as, it's not art as product, um, it's art as experience, experiential art. So it's it's a very sort of a new art form, um, perhaps. But her materials are very inexpensive, you know, sugar and um, wire and things like that. So I think if we encourage her, she will expand. And um, I think it's a very interesting new art form uh, for us to look at rather than think, well, how can she fund this? I, I think she'll get a lot more funding and she will, and she's self-funded. Just, you know, you can buy sugar and do what she's doing. She's asking for the material for the cook thing, whatever it's called, I can't remember, 
to help her just keep doing her work. It's, it's less expensive to use sugar than it is to use oil paint, for example. So I just want to interject that. So, thank you. Thank you. Are there any new or opposing comments? None being noted. I'm going to ask you to finalize your scores and I, update your I, online comments. I'm having a problem with muting and unmuting. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. I just wanted to say, as a grant reviewer, I did appreciate her visual, her visuals and the slides uh, of showing the with the people in them to show the idea of scale and interaction. I thought that was a strong visual. Thank you. And were there other comments? We'll proceed then to your uh, final scoring and update your comments online, please. Seems like a good time for a break, Ruth Ann, if that's okay with you. Yes, that will work. Okay. We'll take a five minute break. Panelists, um, let's let's just come back. Cool. All right, with Van, I think we're ready when you are. Okay, very good. We will start with our next applicant, who is Leferber. Uh, sorry if I mispronounce that. Deb, will you start us off, please? Okay. Uh, the artist, I thought, clearly lists how these experiences and the project will impact and further develop her personal career and how she intends to use the information experience in sharing knowledge with others. Thought the links to the websites of the two educational experiences she hopes to attend were very helpful and appear to be a good addition to her focus. Uh, the quality uh, from the artist's resume, it shows a diversity of experiences in teaching others of differing ages and focused art interests. Uh, viewing the booklet she did during her TC Still project was well done and gave a good view of what she wants to accomplish. It also showcased the high quality of work. However, I think it would have been nice for the application to have seen some examples of individual works that she's done, possibly not related to just this one experience. Um, public benefit, um, conversations during the workshops and the before and after surveys are, I thought were a good way to gain information from those already interested in the subject of nature and journal writing or keeping, I think the project has a very defined target audience. The artist seems to know exactly the interest of her potential students. And while her workshops as part of this project will be at low cost or no cost and open, it would have been good to see some evidence of maybe actively reaching out to at least one or more underserved populations. And uh, there does seem to be an interest in this area based on the research that the artist has done. And it appears that by further developing her skills and knowledge, uh, she can help facilitate the same in others. I think the pro proposed project's a good example of pairing interest and outcomes. Thank you, Deb. Oh, and feasibility, I'm sorry, there's one more Go section. Ahead. Uh, oh, yeah. I thank the artist for giving really good budget details and having realistic uh, estimates and seems the project's very doable within the listed time frame. That concludes my comments. Thank you very much. Our second reader will be Pam. Um, I agree with everything there. I don't really have a whole lot more to add. I know my one comment was for workshops, she has a wide range of opportunities, which is all great, but um, just a suggestion to maybe kind of think outside the box a little bit and maybe do workshops with organizations that might necessarily be um, art related, but maybe nature related and kind of reach out a little bit more. But 
that, that would be my only other comment. Thank you, Pam. Are there any new or opposing comments? None big noted. I'm going to ask you to please finalize your scores and update your online comments, please. Let me know if you need more time. I'm going to move ahead to applicant Miller. Um, Jill will be our first reader. Uh, I see that Gary has a conflict of interest. Jill, will you start us off, please? You need to unmute, Jill. Sorry pulling her information in front of me. Um, this individual is looking to research and apply for exhibits throughout the U.S. Um, and, a, and connect to a series of artist meetups, my comments associated. Um, can everyone hear me okay? I noted that the artist resume was well presented and outlined and how they had planned to use the funds and the, and the impact it would have on um, the individual's career. I also noted and appreciated the diversity of the portfolio and experiences that they were creating. Um, it was contemporary and very simple in its presentation, um, but, the, but really appreciated the materials and the style of the work that they were creating. It was unique and different. Um, outlined plan to share with others and have the artist and the public exhibitions. And I like the details that this individual had when they outlined their goals. Um, the, nearly all the goals had outlined the number of exhibits and applications and submissions and outreach that they would do for a month. Um, one of the critiques and feedback I was had is they're lofty goals and there are a lot of them. So they're committing themselves to a lot of activity and maybe they could narrow down the focus um, to one or two goals, um, achieve those goals and, and then add on to it. It just seems like a lot from a goal perspective, an activity perspective. But overall, um, interesting body of work and, and well laid out outline. Thank you, Jill. Our second reader is Ingrid, please. Um, okay, I feel I, I have to disagree that I think it's a lot of activity. I think uh, she already has the understanding of what it is to be a, an active artist under her belt. And um, I know that anyone who wants to be considered a serious artist needs to be shown. And uh, just the documentation of her artwork. A lot of artists don't um, document their work well enough. And in this day and age of digital, um, uh, not representation, but digital application, uh, it's very important to have really professional uh, artwork. Um, so I'm just looking at her, at her breakdown of fees and I think she's doing the right thing. I think she's already, I understand the Fort Wayne uh, area a little bit because of um, Purdue has um, Purdue Fort Wayne out there. And I, it seems to me she has a community there. So, uh, I just feel like um, she's not being unreasonable in saying what she's going to do, knowing, just knowing how just even grad students have to work and how much they have to cover. So I believe she has an MFA. I can't remember now. But I feel like I, I don't agree that it's too much for her to handle. I think she can handle it. Just That's just a, an opinion. Thank you, Sengrid. 
Okay. Do we have any additional or new or opposing comments? I well, have one. Um, yeah. The visuals that she submitted were well done, but what I had a problem with is that there were no dimensions included with the visuals of her work, uh, with her work visuals. And, you know, size has a big impact. You know, I couldn't tell if what she was doing was working in miniature. Is it monumental? Is it life size? And I just think for applying for future projects and grants that she may want to take that into consideration of adding the dimensions for the viewers. Thank you for your comment. Additional comments? None being noted. I'm going to ask you to finalize your scores and update your online comments, please. Let me know if you need more time. All right, I'm moving ahead to our next applicant, who is Moyers Hornbogen. And our first reader will be Pam. And Gary should be back with us now. Thank you. Take it away, Pam. OK, um, this application is the um, Dow, Sculptural Dow Kit Project. Um, this was a new. Um, new to me as a art project, which was very interesting to go through this. I learned a lot. Um, I think her project is very well um, documented with what she wants to do and how she wants to do it. In terms of the grant application to make it a little bit stronger, um, her resume is um, a good resume. She, she does claim in her um, explanations that she's self-taught. On her resume, though, she didn't pull in any of her art that, um, background that I could see. And it doesn't have to be formal artwork, but I think she has it. I just don't think she documented it good, so there could be some improvement there. Um, the quality of work was incredible. They were very interesting. Um, community engagement, it sounds like this is a whole um, targeted market out there for this kind of work. I'm a jeweler, I kind of equaled it to hand making things one by one or casting and being able to sell in quantity, which takes your work to the next level and helps with your income. So I, I see the need for that. Um, and then my only other issue with this application was in her expenses, uh, income and expenses, they just didn't equal and I couldn't really even kind of get through them and try to figure out how they were supposed to equal. So that area could have been a little bit stronger in the application also. Um, community engagement, again, it sounds like it's a very um, targeted market. So maybe there's some opportunity there to expose more of the general public to this, but those would be my comments for this one. Thank you, Pam. Our second reader will be Gary, please. Uh, thank you, Ruth. Um, artist career and development. I mean, it sounds like a reasonable plan. Uh, manufacturing the dials at a higher rate and more economically. Sound in the long run. It was a thought out explanation and uh, of what the reborn dials work was quite helpful. Uh, the quality of her work was amazing. Kind of creepy at the same time, but Hyper-realistic, it looks like something that I would see in a movie. Great details and I like the 
she's one they're willing to collect connect with collectors as well as the creative arts council of wales county um the artist stated that she wanted to do a live demonstration of the dow sculpting and listed five points of reference she also mentioned continuing a conversation on social media uh i think developing her developing her engagement strategy will strengthen her plan of attack as feasibility the proposal sounds reasonable. However, the project is over budget and the artist didn't list anything like in an income budget or mention plans to obtain the additional funds for the project budget. Uh, that's pretty much all I had. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Are there any new or opposing comments? <coughs> None being noted, I'm going to ask you to please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. Moving ahead to our next applicant, Short, and our first reader will be Zingrid, please. Can you unmute, Zingrid? Yeah, I'm just pulling up her, um, her application right now. So, what did I say? Oh, I remember this. I actually thought um, it was difficult to, I was just talking about her um, images and I thought there would be, I, I, I wanted to suggest that she, when she does an application like this, she submits fewer woven images because it's too hard to, judge the quality of the actual printmaking. Um, I don't know whether that's relevant as she's talking about wanting to buy equipment for her, her studio, but um, I couldn't really tell what her printmaking was. There was a lot of woven uh, work that, that, um, that she seemed to be presenting instead of actual printmaking. <clears throat> and they were woven paper pieces. I understand that, but um, there were repeats of those. Maybe one of those would have been more useful. I feel like uh, everything she asked for is completely feasible and usable, and um, she's going to build her own shelves. Um, she's setting up a studio. I, I think it's, it's a valid and um, application. Um, that's really all I have to say. So. Thank you, Zingrid. Our second reader will be Deb. Okay, one of the things that just for future for the artist is it would have been helpful had the uh, descriptions and the sizes of the images be on the same page as the image itself. I kept finding myself going back and forth from, you know, each page, each image to page 10, uh, back again and back again. So that's just, it would be easier for someone reviewing grants. I think one of the things, in addition to putting together this studio for her own use, uh, was the idea that possibly other people could use it as sort of a co-op situation or open studio situations. And I think that not only solves a problem for her and having a home-based studio, but also so many people, once we all know, once you get out of college, you don't always have access to all the equipment and the studio space that you're able to have while you were in a formal educational situation. 
So I think that that's beneficial um, as well. But very doable, very feasible, very realistic in all of her uh, estimates as well. Thank you, Deb. Are there any new or opposing comments? None being noted. Please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. We'll move ahead to our next applicant, who is Williams, and Gary will be our first reader, please. Thank you, Ruth. Um, artistic career and development impact. Yes, the career goals correlate with the potential career development and growth. I believe that attending a three-day workshop will be beneficial to improving her skill level and potentially increasing her profitability moving forward quality of the work everything that i've seen in the artist's work connects with her career path and aligns with her project proposal for public benefit and community engagement i believe that she has strong ambitions and goals however projects such as the high art billboard and the jiffy Lou mural are made possible by jury selection and a like a panel process so there's no solid foundation to build on. However, I won't say it's an impossible goal to achieve. A strong approach to this section would be a realistic approach to engaging and growing her audience organically while striving for her artistic goals. Uh, feasibility, the artist plans are reasonable and the budget matches the request. I think something that can make the application stronger and for the artist to be prepared to save a few extra dollars for travel expenses. And that's just based off my past grant travels. Uh, In-kind money helps, even if you don't necessarily have it at the time that you're applying for the application. And I noticed, so she said that she would like pay for her own food. So like maybe adding the food budget or, you know, the allotted food budget would be helpful as like in-kind as well. Um, that's pretty much all I have, though. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Our second reader will be Jill, please. Unmute, Jill. Thank you. Um, I had a lot of the same comments noted that Gary did. I did indicate that I would encourage the artist to commit some additional um, funding towards the gas, the food, lodging um, to contribute. I thought there were several examples of the work and showing, so I had a clear identification and could connect back to the education she was seeking and how it would benefit her work, continuing to also get more and more experience in the exhibition space. Um, I would have liked to see the application a little bit stronger though on where she could then leverage this education and learning um, to participate in more educational forums or events that would be um, more connecting in with the community. A, a lot of the things that she was talking about were more large scale murals or um, things that I think there are a lot of other events and activities that she could engage with that are missing on the application. But overall, the education would be beneficial for her. Thank you, Jill. Are there any new or opposing comments? None being noted. 
please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. Our final applicant is Winger, and our first reader will be Deb, please. Okay, I thought the artist had a very strong history of exhibiting and teaching, and by the listing of the recent exhibitions and involvement, it does show her engagement in several of the Indiana art scenes since moving to the state, which is one of the purposes of this project is to focus more on the areas around uh, where she's currently living rather than where she did before. Um, the, pro the proposal shows she does have a clear view of where she wants to go with the development of her career. And I think as described, the artist has described how the project would enhance her ability to work as an artist and be a mother at the same time, which we know can be difficult often. Um, I think it would be a stronger case if she had offered some additional options in order to achieve her her goals, uh, as opposed to just the one of buying a travel trailer. Um, I think it shows she has a good background through exhibitions, through teaching and other opportunities, uh, has a great educational background in the visual arts. And through the visual documentation, one was able to get a clear understanding of the artist's work which definitely shows a maturity and an, her own voice, as well as conveys a lot about a space, which she said she attempts to do. Uh, for public benefit, uh, I think this is one of the things that could use more development. While it's understood that by traveling around, one can capture and understand various parts of the country, Midwest specified here, this would be a great benefit to the artist to have the mobility uh, that this project would give, um, and that sharing these works with others can help bring more people into viewing the world they live in, as depicted by one artist's view. However, saying she plans to apply or enter various shows or have solo exhibitions, it would begin to have some more concrete plans, perhaps list a few of the potential shows or have a few galleries and museums uh, already tentatively committed to showing her work uh, beyond, the, she had one listed there, but it would like be great to see something more. Um, she has a great track record, uh, but I think this part is very vague for showing the work from her travels related to this project. Uh, it is commendable to use what she's painted and learned during this project in the classroom. I think the application could have been stronger if she had been more definitive ways she'll be interacting with the audiences attending exhibitions, viewing her work, you know, saying that to talk to people when her work is on exhibit uh, can mean many things, you know, from casual, oh, I'll show up to the exhibition opening, and if they introduce me, I'll make a statement, to if given opportunities, uh, then more formal or procured plans for doing gallery talks or artist walks or workshops. I just think it would be great to see some evidence of two-way conversations in developing her community engagement and, and planning. As far as feasibility, I think it's very doable. Um, if given funds from IC to buy a pop-up trailer in the time frame, uh, it appears the entire project is based on receiving this funding from IIC. And I would like to have seen a little more detailed but budget. Certainly there are more costs to the projects than purchasing a trailer such as mileage, supplies, entry fees for entering exhibitions, etc. And if uh, the artist does plan to underwrite all these other expenses, I think it would have been great to have shown that in the project narrative. Thank you, Deb. Our second reader will be Zingrid. I 
just my as a mother of two children myself i mean mine are grown now my real concern is just that taking two under under school age children in a travel trainer a travel trailer and and thinking you're going to be able to paint i i question that but that's that's just a practical thing maybe she has someone who's going to travel with her and look after them but then i would say well you know, I, I don't know, can't you just use your car or something? I I just am unclear about the value of having a travel trailer to go out and uh, I'm just confused by the whole application to be perfectly honest. Uh, you know, I would think you'd be able to do it without a travel trailer. I'm just confused by the application, um, which sounds mean because I'm all about supporting women artists with children. Uh, I think it, she'd be better off paying a babysitter to look after her children while she goes out and paints as a, from a practical point of view. Um, but I don't know her personal situation, so it's hard for me to really uh, tell her what she should be thinking of. I just know what children are like, and obviously she does too, so maybe hers are better behaved than mine were. That's, it's just a practical comment. So uh, apart from that, I think everything was laid out pretty well. That's, that's it. Thank you, Zingrid. Are there any new or opposing comments? Uh, I think I have a couple, and then maybe kind of adding, like, I'm in agreement with Deborah and um, even some of the things that Zingrid said. Um, the community engagement part, I think, what strengthens her application is the teaching and the willing to share the knowledge. Um, but the part also for me that kind of gets a little shaky is the budget and the feasibility, not having any knowledge about the trailer myself. Um, and then like Deborah said, there could also be other costs included or incurred with even purchasing a trailer and that the whole budget was allotted towards that trailer. So I think since the proposal and the goal is in regard to the trailer, that I would have loved to see more details about the trailer or how she came to the trailer cost, if it's new or used, um, if there's any of those things I think would have strengthen it. Thank you, Gary. Any additional new or opposing comments? Please finalize your scores and update your online comments. Let me know if you need more time. This concludes the individual advancement program for the year 2021 advisory review panel. The public meeting has now ended and we'll say goodbye to the meeting guests at this time. This meeting recording will be posted on the program webpage in the coming weeks. Panelists, please stay on the line. Thank you all.